Okay, I've been waiting forever to do this video. So we're going to go over some stuff today. I sold 11 cards between eBay and Etsy. I didn't sell any on HIP. So I'll sprinkle those in throughout the video just to show you the variety of what's sold. But I got a special topic. I'm excited about it. It's the golden age of postcards. We wouldn't be here talking today, I don't think, if this didn't happen. So I'm going to explain the high-level overview of what the golden age of postcards is. Then, instead of a definition or a tool or a term, every Saturday, ever since we hit 500, I hit 500 subscribers on the channel, I was able to use the community tab in YouTube and send out a poll. So 9 o'clock Central Time, every Saturday, be a little poll coming out. And this one is, do you charge shipping for postcards? And sure, right now we're still growing the channel, so I don't have a lot of people uh, going into the poll. But I have enough to give you an idea. And we'll go over that, and it'll spur some discussions. But I thought that was pretty cool. But if there's any polls or any questions you want me to put out there, let me know. I can schedule them ahead of time. And every Saturday, I just go out very simple. You know, ask a question. What cards sell the most? Chrome, linen, white border. And then they'll select it and it'll give you a percentage and you can go look at it all, all you want in the community tab. So when you go to the channel, look in the community tab. I don't think you can do that on the phone. You have to do it on a PC uh, to see it. But I'll, I got about three or four polls out there, but I got a bunch scheduled throughout the year. On questions that pop up, I'll go ahead and put a quick poll, schedule it for Saturdays. And then I got about three or four viewer comments to go over at the end. Uh, in the video and those are always very insightful so you want to stick around for that but remember this video is kind of longer but I have chapters along the bottom that you can actually come in and pick the piece you want if you want to see the what sold if you want to skip the what sold you want to go right to the special topic look along the bottom of your screen and you can highlight and the chapters are right there when it starts and stop so you can watch the piece you want and then come back later and watch the rest but mo mostly all my videos have those and they're called chapters so it's basically one long video with about five videos inside perfect package but I'm gonna go, go ahead and start on what cards sold on eBay first and then I'll get into the golden age of postcards and it, it's just interesting on there so the first card I sold on eBay was, what's this called? Wildwoods by the Sea, Beach and Boardwalk in North Wildwood, New Jersey. So it must be a boardwalk there and there's a beach, some surf unposted. Beach things always do very well. So that sold between four and five dollars. Next one is down south, Lake Pontchartrain Beach, swimming pool. That's probably why I picked it up. On there so they have a beach on the lake there four to five dollars and of course it wouldn't be a video without me selling a naval ship and these ships are doing pretty well they're just sprinkling in it's gonna take a while to get my return on investment and stuff like that but hey they, they sell this is the Warchester uh, in there it was commissioned in 1948 nice little chrome card from a Navy photo and I probably I think I got about 70 of these left so when they buy them, I just pull one out, and I still got 69. I pull another one out, still got 68. So it's just a continuous supply of postcards, and it sold between four and five dollars. Then I sold another one, SS Lane Victory. Some of these cards have the name on the bottom on there, and this is a really thick card stock. This is an older um, card, but this was the SS Lane Victory. So someone probably was, you know, stationed on that boat or ship I'm sorry ship and but it's unposted all the all those cards are all unposted makes it easier for listing and I'll do two more then I'll get into the golden age of postcards but this was an ugly tree those are the ugliest trees I've ever seen the banyan trees down in Florida this is a linen card a vertical card there's a guy doing something down there right there on there but it's posted two cent stamp I couldn't really tell when it was postmarked but it does have some age and it has some yellowing to it. But just a linen card, banyan tree. A lot of people wouldn't list that card, four to five dollars. And the last card I'll do before I get into the golden age of postcards is one of these larger prints. Now these prints, they don't fit into a continental sleeve, so I gotta put them in a five by seven sleeve. And then when I ship them, I'll fold this down and turn that over 
and then I'll just put a piece of tape in the corner, one piece of tape so that I don't have to cut it open or anything, to keep the moisture out while it's being mailed through the mail system. But these are a little bit bigger and they're lighter cardstock, so I could some of them I can kind of force into a continental sleeve, but that since the lighter cardstock they they're going to bend. Not that I did that, but that's just a uh, USS Ticonderoga. I think that's how you say that ship's name, right there. But this is a Navy picture. That's an older boat, I think, on there. But these larger prints, I was really concerned. I waited until the last to really start listing these because I don't do well with Continental or Jumbo postcards. But these have been doing pretty well uh, on there. So I think they'll be okay. I probably have about 15,000, 20,000 more of these <laughs> to put up on there. Let me do just one more Navy ship. This is the USS Vulcan, not Star Trek. This is a US Navy ship Vulcan, four to five dollars. So I made fifteen dollars, twelve, fifteen dollars, just on Navy ships today. But then tomorrow I might not sell any. This last weekend, I had a real good weekend. I uh, sold a lot of cards. They were flying off the shelves, and it was a good stack going out. Then some days you just have two or three or whatever so it's a, it's kind of a roller coaster i look at a month average for sales so i'm not really worried about every day i kind of look for the month and it, it always comes back it always i always have good days bad days whatever it's not whatever ebay is doing or whatever it's what people are doing like the, you know during the holidays and stuff you never get into the golden age of postcards i've been wanting to do this video for i don't know how long and i just wanted to make sure that i got the high level part of what the golden age of postcards really means <clears throat> and how to bring it in a way that people understand it a lot of people hear about the golden age of postcards and the people that have been doing postcard collecting for years know of this very well and they probably know a lot more than what i'm going to say here so if you have any comments about it of your knowledge put it in the comments below but i tried to key in on the main things that brought on the golden age of postcards but the first thing we need to do I thought is really define what golden age means golden age you get retire you get a gold watch uh, is it your 70s and your 60s your golden age what does it really mean why do they call it the golden age so I went out and got the golden age definition so here it is golden age is a select period within any, any field of human activity that's human activity where it flourishes and outstanding accomplishments are achieved. So anytime human activity flourishes with outstanding accomplishments are achieved. So that's what it means by golden age. So we're set there. Now, how does that work into the golden age of postcards? I got that one too. Golden age of postcards. The time when the largest number of postcards were printed and mailed is referred to as the golden age of postcards. So the largest number of postcards <coughs> were printed and mailed during this time. Very important part of uh, postcard history. In the US, the golden age of postcards is defined between 1905 and 1911. And it peaked between 1907 and 1911. And as I go through this, you'll see why a little bit. But remember the dates and different types of postcards and eras there's a little bit of crossover uh, in the postcard world so these dates whatever you might read some this is 1904 to 1912 or 1907 to 1911 as golden age but basically i for this uh purpose i said 1905 to 1911 is the one i see the most of so i, I took that but remember they can it's more of an estimate during this time of the golden age of postcards starting in 1905 the demand for postcards increased so the demand increased that means the supply has got to go up and also during this time since the uh, demand for postcards went up the government loosened restrictions and the advancement of technologies made producing postcards in huge quantities and better quality easier so you got technology ramping up doing large printing presses uh, the photo uh, postcards come out in 1903 with the Kodak camera uh, you got government reducing restrictions and stuff like that on you know postcards and then you got people wanting more of them 
So was this the social media of the day? Was this the cell phone of the day? Was this what people were uh, using to communicate and collect? It was the thing. During this time, they estimate billions of postcards were mailed during this time. And in his estimate, a billion a year were mailed just in the United States. Some other things I read and know about, if I send a postcard to a friend, I might stick two or three of them in there. So they're just counting. A lot of people are saying they're just counting one envelope, one stamp, but there could be four postcards in there. So this number of a billion could be four or five times that or six times that. So you're talking billions of postcards between 1905 and 1911. And this is just an estimate, you know, for that, but it's a good number. It's a good number to start with. You always want to jump on something. But then, as we go through the Golden Age, the Payne Aldrich Tariff Act in 1909, they placed tariffs on German imports, cards, and inks. And what was going on? World War One is starting. So Germany's out there, you know, attacking everybody over in Europe and stuff like that. The United States wanted to show a hand, so they started placing tariffs on inks and those quality postcards that came from Germany on there. But the World War I had a huge impact on postcards from the tariffs, the money, and we're not able to get the cards because, you know, the factories got bombed, the shipping lanes were not all there because of the war. So it had a huge impact as we get into the end run of uh, World War I and the golden age of postcards. It kind of peaked out and then it started going down when the war started. You got into it and the number of postcards continued to decline throughout the war and they basically really declined a lot around the end of World War One. So the only age of postcards kind of died out about the end of World War One. And, and they say it's because of the war, but also because the novelty wore off. I mean, you're talking six years of high demand. How long can you sustain that? And it, kind of natural progression going down. The war, I think, just accelerated the drown downstop a little bit there so that's the highlights a little bit about the golden age postcards what things really helped also the golden age postcards to happen during 1905 1911 1902 rule free delivery becomes a standard service to the united states so now everybody gets free rule delivery shot it let's put a steroid in the postcard collecting world 1907, United States releases new postcard regulations, as I said. The United States, States released new postal regulations that divided back postcards in half. This date, when they did that, when they said that we, you can now write on, put the address on the back and a message and made it from, went from undivided back postcards into private mailing cards. Before it was just all address on the back. And then you had to write a little bit on the front. But then they said that we can use the divided back on there. That was huge in 1907. And they referred to this as the birth of the modern postcard. When that happened, they say that's the birth of the modern postcard. And you'll hear that term a lot too. So basically, you get a message on one side and you get the address on the other uh, of the back right there. So that was 1907. So that really helped between the rule free delivery and now divided backs. So they can put the whole picture on the front. <clears throat> then in 1909, when that act I just talked about went into effect, when they put tariffs on uh, imported postcards, 1909, Congress authorizes tariffs on imported postcards at the bequest of the American printers. So the American printers wanted more money. And they said, we don't want to have Germany stuff. We don't want them coming in. We want to make everything USA. Plus the war was going on. Since most postcards sold in the US were manufactured in Germany at that time, a lot of these companies stocked up on cards and this called a caused the supply to increase and prices to fall drastically. Now the demand before was up here and the supply was being imported, but now the demand and the supply is outdoing the demand. So the prices just tumbled in 1909 and 1910. 
Then in 1910, another thing that helped the golden age of postcards was the invention of high-speed photo printers. This allowed for real photo postcards to be mass produced. So 1910, now you got you know high-speed printers going. Te technology went up. And also during this time, there was an increase in postcard collecting and collectors. A lot of people really liked these. They, this was the conversation after dinner. This was when they went through and looked at their albums where they wanted to go. A lot of postcard clubs, Wish You Were Here is a main, big term on uh, people sending postcards. I wish you were here. They travel, they buy a postcard. So there was just billions and billions of postcards social media of the time i actually have a video out there it's a short one that steps through you know is postcards of social media of the time but let me recap the golden age of postcards of some of the stuff i just talked about and you can get really detailed with this if you go out and research it uh, on the golden age of postcards i just kind of hit on the higher ends to pique your interest just remember there's billions of postcards are out there with dates from 1907 to 1911. That was the peak of the golden age of postcards. I see a lot of people say, oh, I got this postcard. It's postmarked on 1900, 1908. It's 100 years old. It's probably worth a lot. Most are, most are not rare or special, and sometimes they're not worth a lot. You know, greetings, uh, Christmas cards. There was just so many uh, publishers, so many printers, so many photographers, uh, artists. During this time, you just got to remember that, I mean, I can go out and buy, buy a box of a thousand postcards right now. I could stop right now and within 10 minutes go find a box of postcards or a thousand and buy them. You know, it, so don't get overwhelmed when you get a box of postcards and you've got all these hundred year old postcards. There's billions of them out there. So you want to price them to what the demand is. Also remember these dates will vary. Now the, when the act started in 1909, no, that's not going to vary. That, that's law on there. But what these historians say about 1905, 1911, the dates could vary a little bit. In the, in the postcard world, you got to bend. you got to do that crossover. You'll go crazy if you don't. Now the biggest thing about postcards in today's world is there are a lot of people are leaving the postcard collecting hobby. They're not going to clubs. They're uh, not getting engaged to it, the younger people. And there's also a lot of people are passing away that used to collect postcards. The older people uh, are passing away or moving on away from their collections and stuff like that because they just can't do it anymore. Uh, so you want to go in and you want to join the clubs. You want to get engaged. Uh, look in the description of this video or any of the videos I have. There's uh, down in uh, three quarters of the way down, I think it says postcard shows, postcard clubs. It's a link to a website that will show you where the clubs and the shows are. And there might be one around you. If not, start one. But the big thing is get interested in there. We're losing a lot of people uh, and stuff like that. But it, it's just a neat hobby to get into. So spread the word out there. But that's the golden age of postcards, 1905, 1911. Go read about it. That's why we're here today. That's why we got all these great cards out there to go through. Golden age postcards. Who knew? Okay, let me finish up these eBay cards on what's sold, and then I'll get into the poll. Do you charge shipping for mailing postcards? We'll see what they say. So the next one is something, some kind of oaks in New Orleans. It's a white border card. I, can, I like the white border cards on there. Just oaks, trees, and a lane. Four to five dollars. Now this one caught my eye, but I didn't have anything about it. It's an older, older card. I could probably date the stamp box. It's got four triangles pointed up. 1904 to 1918. Uh, if you look right up here, there's a stamp box, and it's got four triangles in the corners uh, pointed up. And I have a little thing that tells me it's an ASO. It's 
stamp box, so that'll get you in the, in the into there. That's, that's, that's part of the Golden Age postcards, but it's just three ladies. It's kind of aged a little bit. I got four to five dollars for it. Nothing really stuck out to me that this was in anything special with the dress and stuff like that. So I, I just did that. Now remember, I was doing these photos, and these are just navy photos uh, on there. This is the Sacramento. I just put this up yesterday. And it's got all the things right on the bottom here, so the listing's really easy. But I also put the size of this photo. This is a five by three and a half, approximately size. I put that in the description because if this was an eight by ten, it's worth a little bit more money than what I'm getting for these. But these smaller ones don't sell as well. I get eight about eight fifty five, eight to nine dollars for these. I could probably get three times that or two times that. Uh, if this was an 8x10, and I don't want people asking me all the time to what size is it, what size is it, because they do different. Some are 55 by 3 half, some are 6 by 3 half, some are a little smaller. Uh, so I put the size in every time I list them just to save me time, and plus people know. But I, just think if all these were 8x10s, that, that would be great. And the last one that I sold on eBay, this is an Indian on top of a pole. In the UT Motel, Indian. That's probably why I got this card, because there's a sign, and it's got an Indian on there. Just a chrome card of a motel. Motels, swimming pools, beaches, ships, photos. You tell me what people will buy. They'll buy everything. Okay, now let me get into the polls. And what I mean by poll is, on the community tab, if you're looking at the SM Postcards channel, up at the top it'll be like videos and then community under the community tab which is now turned down since the channels hit 500 over 500 subscribers i'm able to send these out and i send them out every saturday right now they're scheduled ahead of time and they're easy to do uh, about nine o'clock central time is when they go out but they're just quick little things that kind of check the pulse of the community and the, you know what we're thinking and stuff this one i did was I get a lot of questions about shipping. Do you charge, why don't you charge shipping for postcards like these other people, a dollar, dollar fifty to ship? I work everything into the price, the envelope, the sleeve, the postcard, the postage, you know, four to five dollars, most of my cards sell for. Now the higher price cards, uh, depends. If I have a fifty, sixty dollar card, I would probably charge the first class or priority shipping for those types of cards. Just to let people know that, hey, if you buy this card, I'm going to have tracking and stuff like that. But to me, it just makes the accounting easier and everything else. And it, lot, I get a lot of comments. Customers like it. I don't do it with my toys. They're all calculated. That's a different animal. But this poll that went out, do you charge for shipping on postcards? So we had I had 52 people respond, which was good. I appreciate that. 60% said yes. 40% said no. So 60% of the people charge for the shipping, they break it up, and 40% said no. So it's kind of a 50-50. But is there a, are you going to sell more cards if you do it? No. I, I haven't seen that. If anybody has any anything they want to comment about that, but I haven't seen that if you break it up either way. Because I've seen cards for $0.99 cents and $2 shipping sell. I've seen cards, you know, $5 and free shipping. I, I think it's more about subject. You know, people are buying it by the picture and the subject of the card uh, and the uniqueness or just hitting a nerve on they were there when they were young or they've been there and they want to go there. So I think it's a lot more about subject. And if you stay under a certain price for a certain type of card, it'll probably sell. Now, if you're selling a Chrome card of a tree <laughs> and you put $25 on it plus $4 shipping, yeah, it, it's probably not going to sell. It, the statistically not but it could I've seen them sell but those are the rare instances but if you put that card up for you know 495 free shipping it's under five bucks it's probably gonna sell it's statistically better than if you put 25 on there or you put 495 plus a dollar shipping people add that stuff up but then some people think free shipping is free and it's all worked into the price so 60% said yes, they charge. 40% no. Is there a right or wrong way? No, it's uh, what that postcards and it's reselling. 
You do what you want to do and what you think is the right thing, what's working for you. If it's working, don't change it. Uh, but if you want to try it, throw some. I'll sit there and I'll, I'll change things up on doing different things just to test it and see what they do. But there, but go out and check those polls. I got one out there that says, do you cross post your postcards? Uh, how many postcard listings do you have? How do you take photos with postcards? Uh, what is your handling time? I got all those polls out there. So if you want to go take a look and just see, do you fall in there? Do you ship postcards international? So I'll be talking about these on the videos and a little insight about these polls. But you want to check that out. And also check the description out in these videos. I have a lot of stuff in there. I got links to some things I use, um, postcard shows, uh, stuff like that. And I also got my P.O. box in there. And I went to my post office box the other day. And I got this card from Picnic Postcards. It was she's a uh, he or she's a viewer, and I thought it was a return. I'm sitting her. I ship them in an envelope. How, how did this postcard get in there? I didn't know. I thought it was advertising. I looked at it, and it's Picnic Postcards. And they said, Mark, I wanted to say thank you for your YouTube videos. I have been selling postcards for two years now. Your info is always helpful. So I appreciate that. That was a nice surprise. On there but we have all, all that stuff down in the description of the videos on there but th yeah I thought it was a return in the mail <laughs> when I first went over to the post office box on that now let me do the three cards on Etsy just to show you what's going on Etsy uh, this this card is a Holiday Inn card and at first when I saw the title it said Holiday Inn Carmel I kind of knew it was in Carmel because of these types of trees but most Holiday Inn cards, they usually have a picture of the hotel. This is just a beach. But look at the back. It says Holiday Inn. So I think that's why I put it in the title. I can't remember listing this card. But that's a Holiday Inn card. Chrome card, Carmel, California. Carmel, Carmel. Uh, Four to five dollars. And the next one, this is a linen card. And this is Chimney Rock. And I picked this card up, I remember is there's a couple things going on here. Number one, this is a different view of Chimney Rock than I've seen in a while. Also, it's got the, the, the blue in there. It's a linen card. It was posted in 1956, but look at the moon. And then it's got a little name here that says Chimney Rock, but I, I haven't seen this before, this card, and it's like an entrance to Chimney Rock, but that blue caught my eye, and that looks good in the listings. But it is posted, linen card, four to five dollars. Now the last card that I sold, on Etsy is a Navy ship card. Now this is uh, bigger than a Continental. Again, I only had one of these uh, on Etsy. So I do sell these on Etsy too, but I don't put 500 on Etsy or whatever. I just put single cards or a couple of the cards over there. Uh, it's a different clientele over there and I'm kind of testing the waters with these, but they haven't sold as much because the volume on Etsy is a little slower. But this is USS Nimitz uh, at sea on one side and Norfolk, so at sea here, and Norfolk homecoming here. But that's a nice, nice car, nice solid chrome continental card. So that's about the only continental that I sell is these Navy ships on there. So with all that, about 11 cards, about 70, 75 dollars in sales. So it wasn't wasn't a bad day uh, on there. I'll take it. Okay, now let me get into the viewer comments. And where I get these comments from is emails. I get them from the comments in the videos, uh, different places, uh, just talking to people. And I so I bring these up. So if you put a comment in there, I might put it on the video and discuss it a little bit. If it's interesting on there, it will draw a little bit of interest. But from one of the polls, uh, do you charge for shipping? This comment came in from Jules. And Jules is a longtime viewer. Uh, it always has good uh, information. So, uh, do you charge for shipping? Jewel said no. When I first started, I was charging for first class and would get complaints sometimes at how expensive shipping was, so I changed it to free. Yes, that's another reason. When I started postcards, I put it in my toy store and I wanted to keep top rated sellers, so I was doing first class shipping and I had the same thing, Jules. I had the complaints. How can you charge $4 to ship a postcard? You know, so that's when I created, you got to make a decision when you start selling postcards. Do you put them in your store where you have other stuff and do calculated shipping with them and charge a first class when everybody else is shipping with a stamp? Or do you create a whole new store and just put postcards there? 
I finally moved to that. The problem with that was when I created the new store, it only allowed me 10 listings here, 50 listings a month. So it took three to four months to really get up to a level where I could keep up. I, I would, you know, I would max out my listings within a day. And finally eBay gave me enough and then I had an anchor store for years. I was paying like $300 a month for an anchor store. Then they made the change in 2020, I think it was, where they give you $60 a premium store. You can have 50,000 listings, postcards and collectibles. I cut my expenses down way down i went from 300 dollars a month down to 60 dollars for a store on there so so that's the decision you want to make so if you the hardest thing is i wouldn't put 3,000 cards in there that store that you have to do first class shipping with to keep your top rated seller or whatever and then decide to go around them because those listings don't move over unless you have like ink frog or something like that to do that with uh on there so that's a decision you want how deep you want to get into this now if there's you know and if you want to sell them but he also continues and says now that i have been using standard envelope i don't see the point it would just add another source of revenue to track for a small amount of money by adding shipping true you don't get charged on promoted listings for shipping but it still doesn't seem worth it to me i just factor my mailing cost into my price people like free shipping I get notes all the time thanking me for it. So that's one side of the debate. Put in the comments what you're, what you do, and what are you thinking of changing either way, and why. So we can kind of throw this back and forth and see what the best model is. But Jules, I'm I'm about where Jules is on uh, with his the same same thing he's doing. Next one is. This was about the big eyes postcard video. Uh, they said, I found the movie Big Eyes on Plex and enjoyed watching it. I doubt there were any Academy Awards for it, but it was a good story. Yes, it was. I, it, it kept me interested, especially since it's a true story. I like true stories, biographies and stuff. And he did check. Margaret is uh, from Big Eyes. Margaret is still alive at 94. And, thank, and he thanks me for suggesting it. So she, the, the artist is still alive at 94. Next uh, viewer comment was, great lesson today. Thank you for sharing. If you like a book on cancels, check out Postmarks and Postcards by Richard Halbrook. Fascinating. There it is. I already have that one, but I appreciate it. If there's any books or any kind of reference manuals, like this one's got all the cancels in there. Look at that. So it's kind of an expensive, I forgot what I paid for it, but it, it can get pricey, but you can find them used. This was a used one I think I got off uh, eBay or something uh, on there, but it's got cancels and stuff in there, and that's it right here. Um, I'll put a link in the description, uh, the eBay link on there. Uh, the, you can just click on the search, but I appreciate that uh, on there. But that's, I'm starting to get into more of the cancels I figured, I, do I want to go to the artist signed or do I want to get into the cancels? Cancels are a little more interesting to me because it has a little technology in there. That, you know, they use different stamps uh, when they did it. There's RPO, DPO, uh, just all these rule, you know, people, the drivers used to go through in their trucks. And if it was going from this house to this house, they could cancel it in their truck. And you'll see a line on there or whatever. So it's just... Kind of the stamp world rabbit hole but not really for me i'm trying to stay on top of the hole but i figure i'm gonna go that route a little bit more than the artist sign type stuff but i will keep i do know some artists and i keep my eyes open for them but uh that's the next part in the niche i think i'm gonna get into but as we stated about you know the golden age of postcards was it the first social media i, I when i look back at that i I kind of think, it, you know, history is repeating itself with the, the Facebook and all this other stuff going on. But I did a little video, a real quick one, and it's got the YouTube face to, where people's mouth are open. That's called the YouTube face. It's supposed to get more reactions, more clicks when they're standing there pointing on different things. Someone did a test about it. So that's why you see the YouTube face. But I found one on the postcard. So it was on a postcard before it was on YouTube. But this video here is actually helps you with your opinion if it was the first social media it's a real quick video real fast uh on there 
and take a look at this and see what you think and put it in the comments. But that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.